Buckle your seatbelts, everybody, and I hope you're ready for a wild adventure. Ahoyot, hey everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Sean Clint Shadow Productions. Now, I hope you're ready for this one because I'm going to be taking you along with me to my trip to go watch my sister's last home basketball game of our high school season, as well as trying to weather a winter storm just to get home to be able to make this video for you guys. What really made it interesting was the spirit people wanted to test me on this drive to be able to see if I had the skills from Dominic Toretto in the Fast and Furious franchise movie studying and watching Tokyo Drift if I could be able to survive. A winter storm oh yeah as i was driving on that road i was really thinking about you know how our people a long time ago they used to ride horses and wagons and they never really went fast enough to be able to skid off the road or lose traction and kind of lose their way on the road yeah but you know with this my travels i was able to persevere i was able to make it to pace in arizona but before then I saw some very scenic routes on my way up. As I was rolling through the mountains and the valleys of from Phoenix, Arizona to Payson, Arizona, there was a storm that rolled by that day, real fierce, real powerful, really went across the sky like that. And it went all the way up north and you could see at the very tips of the mountains in Phoenix, Arizona, you could see those clouds moving across right there. And I've only seen stuff like that on Brother Bear. And I was thinking, somebody's turning into a bear up there. Or it could just be some rain. But as we're going, we made the journey all the way to Payson, and that's when we got hit with a wall of snow. So as my electrical pony needed some extra sparks, we pulled off and we started charging there for about a good 5-10 minutes, yeah. So I went into the subway, got a sandwich, came back, and we made our way up north. Oh, made it to Payson. It's really coming down. Gotta love the snow. Being in Phoenix, I thought winter was over, but... Guess not. It's pretty good. Oh. But then, that was when I only realized that our journey, our travels, and our struggles had only just begun. We started making our way up the hill, up the mountains, up the roads, and everything. And the snow, man, really started coming down on us. And I remember at this one point, right after this clip right here, I lost traction in my car for a quick second. But don't worry, I got my traction back and I was able to keep going. I was able to stay on that good road, that red road, that holy road, and kept going. And I remember seeing on the side of the road when you get on top of the rim and pacing, the snow boy was about four or five feet tall. And I was looking out my car, I was like, dang, it's almost bigger than my car. We're behind a semi-truck though the whole time, which I guess is okay because it kind of cleared out the snow and everything along the way like that, yeah. But we kept going. My sister called me, she's like, where are you? I want you here for my senior night. 
I said, I am flying with the eagles. I am running with the bears. I am riding the elk and the deer. And I will be there and I will make it on time. With the wisdom of the birds, the eagles and the crows and the hawks and the, the holy hamsters, I floored it after I passed the semi truck and I kept going. Oh boy, once you pass Heber, Arizona, just real nice and sunny. You just you weathered the storm, the spirit people shined their heavenly light on me from the sun, and they told me, Your journey is almost complete. We will bless you the last 20, 30 minutes of your drive. Now haul last so you can make it in time for your sister's senior night. <laughs> so we kept driving and we made it with five minutes to spare. It was really good to see my uh my young eldest sister. She's younger than me, but she's the eldest of the the girls of my family. Made it. Made it. They have been a little bloody. Yeah, she fell down some stairs. Poor thing. Pray for her. Pray for balance. Pray for. <laughs> So we watch the game and hear some of those clips of my sister kicking ass. Next we have Nobia Amberley. Woo! Amberley. She plays position one through five on the court and played for four years on varsity. Played for high school memory, making it to the final four of sophomore year and purpose following in practice of sophomore year. Future plans after high school, continue to play basketball and major in radiology. But she's, thanks, she's most thankful for a wonderful four years of playing the sport she loves They ended up losing, but it's okay. It was a home game, and you know it was it was good to see my little sister be honored as one of the best players that Helberg High School has on their team currently, leaving a legacy. Both my sisters both left a legacy over in Holbrook, Arizona. The one that you just saw, she's still playing. They qualified for the state uh, state tournament, uh, so they do their first round today, actually, with this video. They're playing Tuba City. It's going to be rough. But good luck to you guys. Oh, it was really good to see them. And, uh, yeah. So I want to congratulate you, little sister. Oh, uh you had an have having currently an amazing season. And uh, really proud of you all the four years of watching you play ball ever since you are a little girl to what you are now. You're a very, very awesome basketball player. Well, uh, we'll see where your journey leads if you go to college to play ball or you just want to be a lawyer and get your farm out there. Yeah, yeah, you want to you wanna settle down out there in that old way you can. Oh, so everybody in the comments, wish my sister good job on her basketball season. Yeah, I'll keep you updated on how they do in state, but first round's today. So wish her luck, everybody. Go Hulbrook Road Owners. But my journey did not end there. Yeah. I wanted to come home. After the game and the season was done, I wanted to get a full night's rest. And the next day was Thursday. Yeah. So we tried making our way home. We made our way back to Holbrook, Arizona. We charged up there.
started making our way down and it was around eight o'clock when we made it to Hebrew, Arizona. Real cold outside. I have to say it was about 21 degrees outside. Real cold. And we were met with this. Well, this sucks. Can't even get home. Went out to go see my sister's senior night. Yeah, now I'm stuck up here because of a snowstorm. So I guess we'll have to wait till maybe tomorrow to try to go home back to the valley. But yeah, I'll keep you all updated. I hope. Some locals were walking around giving blessings to all the people stuck in the snow. They informed us that those truckers that are right there in that video I just showed you have been stuck there for since three o'clock. It was eight o'clock, so I would have to say five hours. Yeah, if my math is correct. They were there for that long. And in that way, I said, screw that, I'm going home. Uh, so the next day, made my way to Flagstaff, Arizona. I met my grandmother, met my uncle. It was a lot of snow in Flagstaff, so I wanted to say, I want to say, hey, I want to fly my drone out. I wanted to see the sights. I wanted you guys to see the beauty that I saw that day. So I went on that road going toward Page, Arizona and Flagstaff. I pulled off. It was the worst decision I've ever made in my entire life. As I pulled off with my excitement to capture the beauty of the snow and the storm, I was driving up a frontage road up toward the mountain with about a good six, seven inches of snow. And with all that snow that was there the next, the day before, the road looked real level and nice. And so I was like, okay. I'm just going to pull off in case anybody starts coming down this road. And as I pull off, I slip and fall into a trench next to the road. And my poor pony was stuck in the snow. So I try getting out. Come to find out my tires are getting bald. As a man, as a warrior, you're supposed to look at your horse's shoes. As a man, you wouldn't even be in that situation if you had a car that wasn't ready for that. But I was a fool. I was I had a childish mind. I was excited for the drone footage. I was stuck. I was lost in the in the world of the snow in the winter. It's cold. So I called my uncle because he was there in town still, and I say, "Hey, can you come drag me out?" And he's like, "Uh, give me an hour. I'll be there." Okay. So I was like, well, I'm stuck. I can't really do anything. So let me do what I came here for. So enjoy this footage. Yeah, I got stuck in the snow, so please enjoy. It was cold. So, luckily, there was a, a, a nice woman that came by driving her in her Subaru pony, came down that road. And she asked, she's like, you have something to tow your car with? Like a hook or something? It's like, yeah, oh, my pony has a screw-in hook you can do to tow. So she said, okay, I got tow straps. I got you. She had a car, and I was just like, oh, it's, but it looked like those outdoorsy cars. I was like, okay, maybe she can get us out. So I hooked up the rope and everything, got everything going, and so she started, she started driving. This is her, this is us. 
So she started backing up. Or she started driving forward and I was facing the other way. She started going, but like I didn't get back on the road. I just, she just kept dragging me on the side of the road. Till finally the road kind of came up and I went back up like that. She dragged us all the way to the freeway. So if you recognize me and you're that lady in that Subaru, thank you. You saved my ass. So we got out, I left my tripod there because I, <laughs> this tripod that's right here, I used it as a shovel. I didn't have anything. I said, there we go, it's a man again. I didn't have my tools with me. I felt like a loser. I couldn't be a warrior. So I went out, got my tripod in the snow. You can check out this drone footage of me going out to get the snow or the tripod. See, it's cold and cold. Look at that. Walking all over cattle guard. It's real cold. Grabbed it and it came back. The woman went and I said, screw it. I'm done. I want to go home. So I went to the charging station. You can see me right here. Uh, I was tired, but grateful for that woman in the Subaru. So I just got stuck in the snow I'm trying to get drone footage. So check it out. I got stuck for this. But I got out. Thanks and shout out to the lady with the Subaru hatchback. I think it was a hatchback. Whatever it was, Subaru, she towed us out. Thank you so much. You rock. So after I charged, I started making my way south on I-17, going down the snow and the mountain and everything. I said my farewell to the holy mountain. I said, I'll go on it. The old sleet and all the spirits that's over there. And uh, then I stopped at a viewpoint right here. For those of you who went on I-17, it's a really nice viewpoint. I've never stopped there in my life, but with all the snow and everything, I wanted to get some more drone footage. Yeah, I, didn't, I haven't had enough. I didn't learn my lesson. I still wanted to pull off and get more. So here's that footage. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. So as I was, I, I continued my journey. Kept going and for some reason, the back part of my car was really shaking. I was like, oh no. I hope I didn't fuck up the alignment. <laughs> I was just like, golly, oh, got stuck in the snow. I hope I didn't fuck up my chitty, my, my, my horse. So I pull off at Munns Park when I get there. I was just like, these trees here, these are the trees I really wanted to see. The trees that had lots of snow in it, yeah. So the, these are the trees I wanted to get drone footage of. And I was out, I pulled off and I wanted to get pulled, start pulling out my drone. There was a, there was a man, a guardian that drove by and he said, are you taking photos? And I'm like, yes. So you should take a photo of that hawk over there, I'm like a hawk. I turn and I look and I see a big old huge hawk on the tree over there. And I was like, oh my God, that's beautiful. So I go back in my car and I get my camera. Boy, I only have a 70 to or 25 to or 24, 24 to 105 millimeter lens. So I try getting as close as I can. Real, real stealth like my 6'5 self. Wearing all black when there's snow everywhere. <laughs> Trying to creep up on that hawk. It's getting as close as I can and I zoom in. These are the photos that I got before he said, I don't know what this guy's doing. Here's your blessings. I'm going to go on my way. He flew off. So here's those photos.
So after he left, I got my drone out and I started flying it around and Loki was kind of terrified he was going to return and try to take the soul of the drone, but he didn't. Uh, here's our footage. So after I got this footage, I said, Bigahe, my SD card is full. It's as much as I can do for right now. So I returned home, journeyed home, came back, and I rested up for another day of adventure, another day of editing the next day, this video right here. So yeah, I was gifted a guitar over my trip too. So I'll probably be making videos about that here pretty soon. But ho. Oh, this isn't one of those traditional episodes I normally do, yeah, but if you like this format, if you really like the traditional episodes, the traditional language, let me know in the comments, yeah. And remember, if you're not a member, become a member right now to my YouTube channel. You get these really cool badges, perks to my channel, exclusive videos I'm going to be making very soon this week. Live chat members of my live, live streams, love streams. And yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Go check out my Instagram, official Sean Clint SSP in that old way. Go follow, go subscribe for all my updates on upcoming videos. I got some real spooky paranormal videos coming up next couple days, maybe weeks. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed my weekend trip with me. And it was very adventurous and I learned a lot on that trip. It was very humbling in that old way. So. I want to say that much. I want to say thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a great morning, evening, afternoon, wherever you are. And I'll see you in the next one. Hogone! I didn't have a deep voice today, so I just ran with it. Traditional voice. Going with it. Going with it. it takes a lot. I just, I age like 10, 10, 20 years from that. I'm going to be a fun grandpa. Oh, it's gonna be a cold one for sure. Gotta make sure I'm lined up. You see, when I take these tripods and everything, like, I only have one tripod. So whenever I come back, I have to reset it up, remake it, like, look good. I was thinking about getting, like, a permanent marker, marking it at the sections, just so it's the same every single time. Or I can just get another tripod, but that's... A whole nother story. Show the Shang Shu Shi Shang Shu Shi Papa Klein production. Goddamn. Oh, not tea. Everybody, it's cold. Soap Zero.